Sean, if, if I reflect on the last 10, 20 years of my following cosmology and step back, I, I have the sense that there is a conventional wisdom that is now being more and more assumed among my friends in casual conversation, that there is a certainty that multiple universes exist. There might be discussion of, are they quantum mechanical universes? Are they separate pieces of, of brains in different dimensional space? Are they part of our space in, in, uh, in, in uh, balloon-like uh, uh, bubble universes that break off and go someplace? But there seems to be very little doubt that these things exist. And by reading the landscape right, if your friends think that multi, multiple universes certainly exist, you need to broaden your circle of friends, I think. And I don't even think it would be that hard to do. And I say that as someone who is very comfortable with the idea of multiple universes. But the claim that they certainly exist sounds very, very overblown to me. Um, for one thing, the whole notion of certainty is, is sort of philosophically fraught. In science, essentially nothing is certain. It's not like logical, mathematical proofs. But putting that aside and saying sort of beyond reasonable doubt right, right. level of certainty, I'm quite convinced in the idea of multiple universes in the quantum mechanical world. The idea that there is a wave function that splits into multiple branches, the many worlds or ever interpretation of quantum mechanics. And those are real worlds? I, I, in the way I think about it, in the way that the advocates of Everett think about it, those are absolutely real. And uh, But I wouldn't, I'm not even there 100% sure, even 99.5% sure, maybe 99.2%, okay? Uh, I think it's far and away the best theory, but it has problems, and I will admit that those problems exist. The cosmological multiverse, the idea that far away there are conditions that are very, very different, is more problematic, that's much more speculative. Uh, I think it's also quite plausible, but we don't have anything like a strong theoretical framework to say that it's probably like that. Well, I, I would be almost exactly the opposite. I would say that uh, the likelihood of there being things that exist beyond our light cone that we can see uh, be forever beyond our capability to know has a higher probability than the multiple world theory of, of Everett where you have the quantum branch. That's just because you haven't really internalized the lessons of quantum mechanics. And so think about it this way. You have uh, you know something like an electron that has a wave function. It could be in different places. Right. So once we look at that electron, well, Number one, there's an equation, Schrodinger's equation, that says without any ambiguity that there's a U that sees it there, there's a U that sees it there, there's a U that sees it there. And believing in the Everett interpretation of quantum mechanics is just believing that the Schrodinger equation tells us how quantum dynamics works and you don't need to change it in any other way. So it's the minimal interpretation. But the other thing is, even before you looked, there was an amplitude of the electron being there, the electron being there, the electron being there. If I want to call those separate universes, what has stopped me? The only difference is that I, personally, was only one in one universe, and then afterward I'm in many different distinguishable copies. Again, this is a prediction of the theory. No one is putting this forward because they think it's cool. It's what the equations say. And until the equations are contradicted by data, my attitude is to believe the equations. All right. Uh, let's look at the implications of what you're saying. There's this branching that occurs in some Planck time or no enormous numbers every second, every time there's a, a selection in the in the wave function, there's a new universe branching out. Right. So th the branching is exponential and enormously so from uh, as, as time moves forward. That's right. So the, the number of universes in which you and I are older are more than the ones that we're younger. Well, there's different universes. I don't even know how to compare what's, in, what's a me in different universes, but I know what you mean. Okay, so the number of universes that would be close to our death one second away from our death would be hugely larger than the ones that are earlier. So wouldn't that indicate that we're going to die immediately if the ever interpretation was correct? And we don't, so therefore it has a problem. No, I think that that's only true if you assign a certain way of giving the probabilities of being in the different branches of the wave function, which is clearly the wrong way of assigning those probabilities. The right way was given to us by Max Born in the 1920s, the Born rule. The probability of being in one branch or another is not the number of branches, it's the wave function squared. It's the amplitude, the quantum mechanical amplitude squared. And in fact, you can show that if you take seriously this idea that there are multiple copies of you who don't know which copy they're in, which branch of the wave function they're in, but want to obey the conventional rules of probability, they should obey the Born rule. They should act as if the number of them is the, is the amplitude of the wave function squared. So that is not a prediction of the Everett interpretation. It doesn't disturb you to 
believe in the multi-world interpretation of quantum mechanics as something that's that's real, it, it just seems so absurd if reality were like that. <laughs> if it disturbed me, or if I said it just seems so absurd, I would not be being a good physicist. I think that uh, people have this idea that in the multiple worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, worlds keep being generated and that is somehow ontologically extravagant. Where do these worlds come from? Where do you put them? Where do you get the energy and so forth? But all these are just misguided questions. The many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics just says there's a quantum state, it evolves according to Schrodinger's equation. The, the division into worlds is a little bit arbitrary, it's hard to actually pin that down, but there's nothing that is growing about the Schrodinger equation. It's just that it is it becoming more complex and therefore describing more and more features of reality. But it's not as if more things are coming into existence. You're just slicing something that was already there all along. That's a big difference though if you're slicing something already along because at each branch then you you have a branching, you have an exponential branching at every moment, don't you? That's right. So you Doesn't can that do create, the math. That creates more and more of these whole realities every Planck period. So you can actually do the math. You can ask how many worlds could there be yeah. in principle? Mm -hmm. Well, it is the size of the quantum mechanical space in which we live, and we know approximately what that is. It is the entropy of the universe, which we think could be very big, like 10 to the 120. So the size of the quantum mechanical space in which we live is E to the 10 to the 120. Mm -hmm. So yes, many, many splittings happen. We're nowhere near filling up all the splittings we can have. And that's a universe that you would feel comfortable living in. If that's the universe that provides the most economical fit to the data, then I, as a good physicist, would be happy to accept it.